Abdul and Jay Reed, I think the episode got 200 plus views. What do you think we're going to do? Double that. Double that. Triple it. Triple it. That's all right, man. We set our sights high. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to WBH Radio. Um, I'm your host, William Holly. I've had some pretty cool moments on the show. Skip Bayless, Mike Wilbon, but none cooler than this, man. I love when I get to connect with the young men uh, that have been with us and around us for years. And today we got the franchise, Mr. O'Larry Waju Arawolo. Welcome, young man. How you feeling? Feeling good, feeling great. Feeling good, feeling great. You've been talking about this podcast for years, man, so you better bring it today. No pressure, though. Olari Waju Arawolo, a.k.a. Big L, also known as Larry. Your parents are from Nigeria, right? Have you ever been? No. What's your mom tell you about back home? Uh, Same one. Like, it's beautiful. It's it's a nice place to be at. It's it's fun to be at. You know, everything that your parents tell you about back home. Got you. What's your mom tell you? What's the origins of your name and its meaning? My name, um, it means king, success. Uh yeah, King Success. All right. It means good things to come. That's what's up. Oh, Larry Wise, you are a role. Big L. I want to start at an event we attended recently. Prom. Uh, Wingate Campus Prom. High School for Public Service Prom. L is in the senior year there. What was that night like, man? Tell the people. Prom, it was nice. It was sweet. Like, I don't know. You Four years of high school, one night, all your friends, all your guys. Yeah, dress up, yeah, party one last time, dance, whatever, eat, drink. <laughs> oh, like, no. Not, not, like, not like drinking like that, but <laughs> not like drinking like that, but you drink, like you drink juice, whatever. <laughs> it was nice. You look sharp that night, son. Of course. I got to give it to you. At first, you showed me that you was going to come with the all black joint. Nah, I was, but Miss Hamilton held it down. She recommended you had the black and red. She recommended black and red. Nah, she said trying to red. You might like it, and I ended up liking it. <laughs> Made my skin pop. <laughs> Yo, you, you look very sharp, very sharp. You guys was tailored up. You guys was fitted, son. It was a great night. I want. I want to tell you, I never attended prom in my life. That's my first prom too. Not even my own, L. And I thoroughly enjoyed sitting back and watching you. And your teammates have fun. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that it took to get there. I'm seeing y'all watching y'all in y'all suits. Y'all all cleaned up, approaching 18, about to go to college. And I just couldn't help but think going back to the younger days. Like, I was like, yo, how did we get here, son? We seen these guys as young men. And here they are about to go off into the world, man. How much do you reflect on the past, like in a moment like that? And a lot, honestly, every day, honestly, like time, time really flew. Like I never believed when people be like, "Yo, high school flies by," but it really do fly by. Cause just the other day I was just a freshman in Dewey, just chilling. You've been down long before that. Uh, Larry has been a part of my man Kayvon Baker's loyal to the game basketball family for a very long time, uh, even before you started high school. I remember one day I came into practice and the coach was just giddy. Yo, we, we got this young man, Big L. L, tell me about that. How did you get introduced to the to the Loyal to the Game program? Uh, I was at um, Achievement First Apollo and then... Um, That's the middle school, right? Yeah, it was, a, it was in um, Eastern New York. And then I was in the gym one day. I was just, I was just shooting around. Then Coach Tariq, he saw me. And they say, yo, you should pull it to a workout. Mind you, I never took ball serious enough played ball. So <laughs> I said, why not? I came to work out. What did you think when he said that? Hmm? I was like, I, I, it was like a joke to me, honestly. <laughs> I just, I went, mind you, I went late. And I showed up in like sweats and LeBron's. And then I, me personally, I didn't think I made a team, but I ended up making a team. And the rest is from there. Well, let me tell you now. They were very excited about you. Um, You said you were just shooting around. Like, what was your relationship with basketball at that moment? How, how old are we talking about? 13? Like, yeah, 13. So you were what? You were in seventh grade? Uh, Seventh, eighth grade, yeah. I was, I was a charter school boy. Like, basketball wasn't nothing to me. I was like I was a school kid. I just went to school, went home. Literally. You would end up changing school shortly after that, no? Yeah. What was that like? Well, well, well first... 
Tell me, what did your parents say, you know, Nigerian immigrants, when you went to them and said, yo, I want to, uh, uh, somebody wants me to try out for the basketball team? Uh, she support, my, my mom, like, she's very supportive. Can't lie. Like, every, every, time, every time I have an idea about something, like, she, she doesn't shoot it down. She, she just advises me and then supports it. So she's like, go for it. So you, she, you said, Mom, I want to play this little basketball thing. These guys. Yeah, she was like, go. She's like, how much money do you need? Give me like, <laughs> give me like a $10 bill. <laughs> so how did it come to be that you would end up transferring schools? Uh, man, charter schools, man, they were rough. Like, they forget, they did, like, I don't know, it was weird. They said I wasn't like behavior ready. So yeah. like, they tried to hold me back. But I'm not repeating the grade. Yeah. So my mom called Biggest. She was like, you get him into Wingate. She got me into Wingate. Then from Wingate, I graduated. She got you, they got you into a Wingate junior high school. Coach Tariq, first person to see you. He brings you to the Loyal to the Game workouts. Tell me about the first time you met Coach Baker. Oh, Baker? He's, I mean, you have to see what he does now. Like, I mean, actually not. Back then, he was a little bit nicer, but. Okay, of course, he was trying to reel you in. Yeah. <laughs> what was that first interaction like? What did he say? It was cool. I mean, I was nervous. I didn't speak to nobody. I was I was a shock kid then, but it was cool. He was like he, he was just like put me through workouts. We ran layups. That I think that's I think like the next time I came, he just drove me to another workout. Like I think to a Dewey workout actually. What did you think about being in an organized basketball setting? As you already mentioned, yo, I was just a charter school kid shooting around. When did what did you think being in that type of environment with structure with other guys? It was new to me, honestly. I'm not used to it. I'm just used to playing free ball for fun. Yeah. Shooting around, doing what I wanted to do. But it's like organized, you like you play a role. Yeah. And then like sometimes you grow out of that role or you do better or you do worse. Like I don't know. It was like it was a whole bunch of different things. Was it was it intimidating? Was it fun? Like uh sometimes it could be intimidating, but it was fun. Like that's what that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first time playing in an organized basketball game? Oh yeah, I do actually. It was in um in the team of first gym. I smoked so many layups that game. <laughs> he, he he missed many layups. He said he's saying, ladies and gentlemen, what was the experience like? Uh, I was actually nervous. It was a crowd. Well, not that big a crowd, but it was like a little crowd. Um, yeah, I was nervous. And everybody like everybody else on my team, they like they knew what they was doing. They knew how to play basketball. Like they put the ball in the basket, but like me, I can't, I can't do nothing. Yeah, I was just, I was just big, taking up space. What did the coaches say to you after that? After this first performance, you say you smoked a whole bunch of layups. Everybody seems to be moving at a different speed. What, what, what was the conversation like after that? Oh, uh, no conversation. I mean, were you discouraged? Nah, nah, never. I had strong mental. Never discouraged. Now it, you could either be discouraged or it could confirm that hey, this is what I want to be a part of. What did it do? What would that experience do for you? Uh, I mean, I stuck with I stuck with them, so yeah. I guess so. Yeah, it make you realize like, yo, there's a lot of work ahead. Who was on that first team? You remember any names? Of course, me, Cadell, Diaso, Caden, <laughs> Halon, uh, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was a tough squad right there. Yeah, yeah. And you were living in Far Rockaway, Queens at this time. Oh uh, yeah, you gotta stop beating on the table. Yeah, I'm my fault. And a lot of this stuff was in in Brooklyn. What was that travel like for you? Uh, at first it was rough, but then I got used to it eventually. Mm. So, yeah. And that's one thing over the years we always commended you for and appreciated for. Yo, Ella's going to be here, and we always understood the 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 amount of travel that you had, son. And when we talk about being loyal to the game, you've been the most loyal, man. That's why everybody love you. Like, yo, Big L, every time we doing something, you you the first choice, man. You you are Baker's guy. If you don't know it, if he ain't said it to you outright, you are Baker's guy. He's taking you to the moon and, and back. And that's just a credit to who you are, who you've been um, over the years. So things are moving. When would you say you, you felt... At home in LTG, you know, you say you, you talk about the smoke labs and everybody seems to be moving at a different speed. When would you say like, "Yo, I'm Big L, I'm arrived. This is this is my program." At home, uh, it had to be the first summer tournament I played at LTG. First summer league. Yeah, I think it was like when I was like, I was on the 16 year team. And what happened? Why did you feel at home there? Um, I feel like that was when like. 
I don't know, everybody came together. Just everybody knew me. Mm-hmm. I, some people I didn't even know they knew me. Like it was, it was cool. Like felt, felt the love. After that first game, you said you smoked them late. But what type of work was you putting in, like, Yo. to get better, to be a part of the program, to catch up to those guys that you said were ahead of you? Uh, many late nights at Wyckoff Gym, uh, double practices, like LTG, then Dewey, every like every day, um, one-on-one workouts with Baker. Man, it was a lot, yeah. And then just repeat, gym. You've been playing at the varsity level since you was in seventh grade. Yeah. You know, uh, Coach Baker runs LTG, but at that time he was also, and still is, working in the high school ranks. He had stops at JV, and then he eventually got the John Dewey program. And he would bring you along yeah. to practice against the uh, high school kids. What was that environment like? It was different, actually, very different. Speed was different from middle school, uh, strength, energy, language. It's a lot. Basketball verbiage. Who who were uh, part of that team? Siraj was around? Siraj, Wilkins, Raj. Vaughn? Malik. Well, oh, no, Vaughn. The, the Vine came sometimes. So he came for some yeah, workouts. But he already moved on. Yeah. Um, it was more people on that team. But yeah, they, yeah, they paved the way. When's the first time Coach Baker met your mom? My mom? Uh, damn, I don't remember. I don't remember myself. Because that's been a big part of this. The families are a big part of loyal to the game. It takes their support and their trust. And L, you've been around for a long time, traveling from Far Rock. As you mentioned, double practices, um, in the gym late nights. Why do you think she trusted and believed in Coach Baker? I don't, like he he did things that wasn't just like like you know how guys just like focus straight on basketball like strictly basketball like he did things that like off the court like, like what? I'm talking about like late night workouts like he would drop drop me to the trains so I can just get home mm-hmm. like say like say like sometimes like I didn't ask him for food he just like gave me food like he held it he held it down like asked for water give me water <laughs> yeah. like he he held it down off the court as well as on the court yeah so mm-hmm. I think that and then that that my mom seen that. Then like that's when the the trust was there. So like whenever all I had to say was I want Baker, she was like, all right. <laughs> nah, I would I would see, like you know, moms is rocking with us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We taking Big L on the road. We doing this. Mom says it's, it's it's love. You know what I'm saying? In fact, there was a time when you you broke your leg playing ball. Yeah, that was tough. What happened? Uh. I don't know myself, like, I checked, that's my first, like, ever, like, high school type of game. Checked in. It was a summer league, like, tournament, though. Yeah. I checked in. High school g- grade level, but it was a summer league, yeah. I checked in, got a stop, sprinted. I, like, I was wide open. Cut the ball, came down there. Boom. My leg snapped. You knew it instantly? Mm-hmm. Nah, I knew my leg. Like, I knew something happened to my leg. Like, I, knew, I, like, I, felt, I felt something in my leg. So, I, like, I... I rolled the ball, limped to the bench, sat down, felt lightheaded. Went to sleep. I went to sleep on the bench. Mm. Woke up, my leg was swollen, sat on the floor. Then called the they um I think no, but big guy at first he didn't realize my leg was broken. So he was like, he was like, walk it off. Like, what are you doing? Walk it off. Then he realized like my leg was swollen. He called the, I think somebody called the ambulance. Then him and my dad, like they helped me carry they carried me down the steps mm. and put me in the car. What was it like when the doctor said they always broken? Would you have to have a cast? Yeah, Cassie, yeah, that was tough, yeah. And how long you out of commission? Six weeks? Eight weeks? Like six months. Just sitting in my house all summer. No, some of the school year and some of the summer. What was that like? Man, it was tough. I, like, at first I thought it was cool because, like, okay, yeah, I got a break from everything. I thought it was cool as kid. <laughs> yeah, like, my mom do whatever I want. Like, I'm getting food at my command. But then after a while, like, it got, I was, it got sad. Like I would go on, I would just see on social media all my friends outside, basketball going on. Like, got got set after a while. Damn, son, Big L was out of commission. Yeah, that was a tough stretch, yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it was hard for a young man. Like your life is being out there with your friends and playing, and then uh, you had to sit down. What 
How much did you weigh after you took the cast off? Nah. Oh, I did gain weight. I gained like, I like 50 pounds, 60 pounds. Like, pop. So I probably like two something. Over, way over like 250. What's the what's the biggest you've been like, while in your young life? 301 point something. Mm. Yeah. What was that? After the pandemic? Yeah, pandemic was crazy. And how much do you weigh now? I weigh like 220 something. Big <laughs> What was that journey from 300 to 220 like? Yo, that was the most toughest, rigorous moments of my life, son. Big, it's crazy because Baker Cena, like, you just laughed about it. Like, you like, like, we're going to burn it. <laughs> Take me to, yo, started taking me to the Blink Gym every day. Like, I would leave the gym sore. I did a lot of running. Like, and it was like, it was an everyday thing. But like it was crazy because like most people they would like they wouldn't be motivated to lose the weight. Yeah. But like I was motivated by like just the end of the week. Like so like every week I would just weigh myself and then I'll see it just go down, down. So I'd be like, oh, two seventy four? All right. That's like two sixty four by next week. Then down, down, down. Baker just looked at you and said, All right, we we gotta get you down. Yeah. We gotta get you down, man. What was the toughest part of uh the weight loss journey? Uh, having to catch back up. Mm -hmm. Like, like from where I was at before, and like, so say like, um, I was big, and I'm, I'm building on myself, like, yeah. working on myself. So like, having to like, catch back up to where I was before, because like, imagine the way I built myself onto where I was before, mm -hmm. and I never gained the weight, like, it would've just been way better. Mm -hmm. So that was tough. Like, I would play games, I'm slow to everybody, mm -hmm. can't keep up, can't do what I used to do, like, so that was tough. And that's one thing I've always just admired from afar, you know, it's been a lot of us pushing you, hard on you, because there were great expectations, you know what I'm saying? And you had the fight back from the weight, you had the broken leg, like, what was the most frustrating time playing basketball? When every year I couldn't play. Why? I, no, not, not every year I couldn't play, but it's like every year was something... Oh, yeah. So, like, leg broke, COVID, lip bust. Yeah. And my senior year was, like, the truly first year I ever really got to, like, like put in the work and play. And rock out. Yeah. High school career. Mention, you transferred to the Wingate Junior High School. As, as a junior high schooler, you were working out in the John Dewey High School varsity practices. You know, break, Baker would bring you along. When it was your turn to... Choose a high school and go to a high school. How did that decision go? Going into my freshman year? Or? Yeah, going into your freshman year. Man, Baker said, Dewey, I want to do it. <laughs> Never considered anything else? I didn't know any other high school existed. I was a charter school boy. Like, if Baker, if I, if I didn't meet Baker, I would have been, been a charter school all the way till I graduated. Yeah. Would have been stuck in achievement first. But Baker said, Dewey, so you was riding with, with Bakes. Yeah. Even, what was that commute like? Oh, Dewey was the worst commute of my life. Bro, that's Coney Island. You come from Far Rock. What yeah, was bro. that like? It, at first it was tough, but then I, I made I made a lot of friends in Dewey quick. So the dean, like, he held it down. I think he made me start, like, third period. So, like, I would never come late again. They gave you a little break in the schedule. Gave you a later start. Yeah. But, like, so I had, like, a three and a nine. Yo, that's dope. I didn't know that, man. Salute to the administrator who did that. Salute to the John Dewey family. That's what it's about. It's about taking care of these kids. This young man, his family decided to go to John Dewey to be a part of the basketball program. You know, instead of uh, punishing him every day for being late, put him in a position to succeed. I didn't know that. Yeah, he held it down. That's dope, man. That's dope. You talk about making friends at John Dewey. <clears throat> I remember... Um, you know, I was a freshman. He wasn't expected to play much. And then one, one game, Baker looks down the bench, say, yo, L, you in the game. L gets up, runs to the scores tables to go in. The whole school goes crazy, son. I'm sitting on the bench laughing like, yo, what the hell is going on? You know Baker be in the game, but even him, he had to stop and be like, yo, this kid has been on campus for three months. He already the most popular kid in the school, son. How you get to be the most popular kid in John Dewey, son? Like, you've been the people's champ forever, Al. I ain't even going front, so I got to get this. Nah, it was... 
I wasn't a popular kid. It was just like the big boys. They just like they just sanctioned me. Like they just put me on. <laughs> Yo, yeah. uh, the school went nuts, bro. Everybody, oh, Larry. Yeah, I was. I was the little bro. You was the little bro, son. You been everybody's favorite, son. That's why I, I, just your personality. It's a. It's a genuineness. It's a pure heartedness that everyone appreciates, man. And everybody got love for, son. And I want you to know that that's something I hope you never lose, man. Just being a pure, general, genuine soul. That's why Baker would do anything in his world for you. That's why all of us feel that way um, about you. John Dewey, man. How are you doing academically in the school? What was that adjustment period like? You got this basketball. Okay, your basketball family is... You know Baker, you know me, you know these guys. The academic life, the social life. We already said you're the most popular kid. What was that that adjustment like for you? Uh, academically, I could have better. I can't lie, mm -hmm. but um, it was tough actually because I'm in a I'm coming from a charter school. That's one where they like they hand feed you everything like papers, pencils, notebooks. I heard. Yeah, Dewey, you on your own. Like they just give you work, assign it, turn it in. If you don't, you don't. Like that school, if you skip. It's like they put you in a place to skip, like they just like you really like you're on your own, like you make your own choices. And it was tough because like it was a lot of distractions. Like I would like want to skip a class or two because somebody like my friends said let's go. I leave school early, you know. But you live and you learn. You never got ousted academically though. Nah, you were always eligible. Yeah, but it was just like I was just like always like barely eligible. Yeah, like or, like I was fine with just like the sixty five. Yeah, I never like aimed for higher. And that was that was my that was what I had to learn from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite memory from the John Dewey Toms? John Dewey Toms, just all the guys I met, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like those those my guys for life. <laughs> those my guys. On the basketball court, you got any fond memories? A basketball court, man. I don't have much. I ain't play a lot. You ain't play a lot. You was a young boy. But, oh no, COVID. COVID was lit. I think my my favorite game was um we played Lincoln. Yeah. That game was fun. You started that game? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. For, for those who don't know, we uh during the COVID season we played uh uh a, a six game schedule. They let us play in 2021, and we got to play the famed Abraham Lincoln High School. We were fortunate to win that game. Uh, you guys was was hyped up. Abraham Lincoln is a a big deal. Yeah. That so, was a special team. That was that would have been a good season. We was like six to zero. Six and one. Baker moves on to Wingate campus. How'd you get notified? Bro, he drove to my house. Like, he, I was sleeping. I woke up. My mom said, Baker's here. I went to my couch. You're just sitting there eating grapes. <laughs> swear to God. Yo, you. I swear to God. He's eating grapes on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> what color? Red or green? Green one. No, no, no. The red one. Y'all do the red in your house? Yeah. All right. So what'd you say? Yo, Banks, what you doing here? He was, he was laughing. He was like, yo, my, I'm still in my tank top, shorts. <laughs> Didn't even shower yet. He just, he just there. He was like, he was like yo, I want to come to Wingate. Drove here to tell you first, say, yo, come to Wingate. And he was like, oh, I'll give you some time to think about it. I was like, now, yo. Now we out, Al? You ain't, you ain't need no time to think about it? What's to think about? That's the guy. But what about everything you would be leaving back at John Dewey, the the, the campus and the the, the the friends you made there? I mean, yeah, that, that was that was tough. I'm still, but you know, wasn't if I didn't leave if I didn't leave Dewey, I wouldn't be who I am today. So, yo, no discussion needed. We out. Nah. Baker sitting on your couch eating grapes. We out. That was it, huh? What mom say? She rocking with Banks. Hmm? Yeah, of course. She, bro, I'm telling you, anything, anything when she hit Baker, bro, she just she just rock with it. What was it like walking on campus for the first time? I remember we had Abdul in here. He was like, yo, dudes wasn't feeling him. They had to, they first took his phone. Yo, that phone, yo, I was never used to get my phone taken. Ever. Do you go up to your phone? It, it said you need a phone locker. Yeah, the schools I mean, take your phone at at, I mean, at a wing gate. I mean, this they let me rock though for like a week, but after a week it was over. What were those first days like on campus? Those first days, my first day was actually good. I think my first day was advisory, so I was lucky. Mm -hmm. So like I had to meet my advisory. I came in, sat down quietly, 
And then these two girls, Abby and Jadai, they um they came, they introduced themselves, introduced me to everybody else, gave me a tour around the school, and then um yeah, that's love. Salute to Abby and, and, and Jadai, My young guys. ladies. Uh, I know from the campus. They just walked up to you and said, "Yo, yeah, no, welcome." I, yeah, I had to, no, I had to. Miss Thomas made me introduce myself to the advisory, mm -hmm. and then that's when they introduced themselves, and mm -hmm. that's when they did. Advisory is like a a, a homeroom type thing. So here you are, on Wingate, big man on campus. Wow, I'm struggling to do it. Nah, it don't take long for you to take over a campus. So after, <laughs> and the school is way smaller than uh, Dewey anyway. So I'm sure you took that school over in a short amount of a time. What was that adjustment like? Because John Dewey is a big school, and it's still one of the few schools in the city where they operate under one, I guess, leadership. Yeah. And a lot of these other schools and. They split up. They split up. It's uh, it's broken down into multiple schools. Um, what was that adjustment like being in a small school? Uh, you can't be anonymous. Everybody sees you every yeah. period. It's not no walk in the hall. It's none of that. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it wasn't hard to adjust, but it was it was new. Everything was new. I say that. Mm -hmm. I want to jump back to LTG. You remember your first road trip? First road trip. First road trip. Uh. I believe it was who group. It was some who group. I think it was a who group in PA. Yeah. yeah. What about your first overnight stay? I think that one was Massachusetts. Yeah. How was that? It was always an experience. Yeah, it was new. Like I, I never knew spending a night away from home just to play basketball. You guys was hyped up. Y'all yeah. stayed up all night just texting. I don't know who oh, y'all yeah. <laughs> I don't know who y'all was texting. Y'all just was just excited not to be up under your mom's roof, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Baker's like, I'm about to take these kids' phones. We got a game yeah, ball. Go to sleep. It was, <laughs> it was me, Jake, Ronnie, and Z. We was just laughing. Yeah. Fun times, man. Yo, being out from under mom's leadership. Loyal to the game, L. I mentioned you've been the most loyal. We don't have to call anybody's name, but over the years, seeing guys come, seeing guys go. Yeah. Uh, how does that affect you, a player? You know, your teammates, guys you've been in the trenches with, now they're gone. I mean, it don't really affect me, but it's like, damn, mm -hmm. you just dip. But they still, they still my guys, but we are just not on the same team no more. You ever openly speak to them about that? Uh, not really, because, you know, Everybody, everybody had their own own, own route, but I, I, you my man, so I'm gonna support you. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you he was the coolest. That's it. Oh, you ain't be like, yo, why? There's no anger, no, yo, bro. We had a plan. We is about to take over the city. None of that. I mean, we could take over the city, city, but I can't hate you for leaving. Everybody got their own route. If I ask you for the reason, it's not gonna treat you because you're still gonna be gone. So it's like, I'm still to support you. I mean, you see these NBA players, they be clicking up, they be talking about super teams, they be texting each other, yo, son, come join me, come sign. You wasn't with none of that? Oh, uh, no. That's it. Stick with the guy they got now. Mm -hmm. Make them the super team. That's it. That's it, man. Because there's been a lot of guys, man. And you look over the years, you look at the pictures, the one staple, or Larry Wajiu Arawolo. And I just, I, I know what the coaches think. And sometimes, you know, you put a lot of resources in somebody and then they're gone. I never got what impact it had on you, the player. You know what I'm saying? The guy that's been in the trenches with these guys, the guys that's been in the rooms, in the hotels, up all night, texting and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you too cool for school, man. It didn't bother you. I, I, I'm glad. Yeah, everybody's different, though. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, somebody probably took it as like, Damn, like he just betrayed me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, just the way I look at stuff, like that wouldn't really, it, it doesn't bother me. It's like, damn, but it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wingate, two years under your belt. Played your junior year, played your senior year. Um, junior year, we had an up and down year. You missed some games when your lip got busted. Going into the senior campaign, how are you feeling? You talked about the big bros throughout the years, it, it was your program. Yes. What was what was that mindset like going into your senior that summer going into your senior year? Senior year I was locked in. Like I wanted to come in and make a statement. Cause like I feel like people like they knew who I was, but like they just never really like they knew who I was. That made sense. Like they never 
I didn't really understand like what I could really do. So like I just want to come in, make a statement, stamp like like stamp like oh Larry was like I want people to like hear my name, be like yo like nah he was good like mm-hmm. it was nice like I wanted to make like I really want to make an impact. Mm-hmm. How would you describe the senior? Senior was lit. It was lit. Like, had a lot of ups and downs, but why yeah. you say lit? That's interesting. I why why you say lit? It's my last year going out with a bang, last go around. Um, I was like we had some up and down. Like we was on a winning streak, losing streak. Then, then we fixed up. Made play. I, I, I made play. I was contributing for the first time. Mm-hmm. Then seeing that was the best night. So yeah, it was lit. We did kind of start off with a bang. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seeing that was lit. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the season. Oh season. Oh yeah. For sure. The season. The first game too, off the bat. What game was that? Remind me. Uh, we played Bushwick. Oh yeah. Oh, that was. You had a little matchup. Yeah. You had a little matchup. Every now and again, of course, it's team versus team. But as a basketball player, you look on the other side and you see, yeah. oh, snap. Uh, yeah, that's somebody I need to account for tonight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You had one of those with the young man. Uh, salute to uh, the young brother at, at Bushwick. How would you describe who you were going into your freshman year to who you were going into your senior year? As a young man, your mindset as a basketball player, explain the difference to the audience. As a basketball player, like my freshman year, like I was fine with just like being on the team. Like <laughs> I swear, just getting a jersey, just getting a jersey. I was fine with it. Mm-hmm. Like obviously, I began mad that I didn't play. Who doesn't get mad they don't play? But I was, just, I was really just fine with just being on the team. Like, like say, like um, I don't know. Like I was just fine. Like I was fine with just like not contributing, not like not not really like working hard. I was just cool, but senior, uh, senior hit me a lot. Like, I wanted to be a role player, I wanted to be a contributor, mm-hmm. a leader. Um, I wanted to step up for my team. I wanted to do a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you think you did? Uh, I could have, obviously, I could have done better always, but I think I did a pretty good job. What was the numbers this year? Uh, oh, how much average? Yeah. Uh, thirteen and ten or nine, I believe. Mm-hmm. What was the highlight of uh, uh, of the season? Highlight? That's probably Lone Tech. Lone even, Tech? even though we lost that game, probably Lone Tech. Oh, that's interesting. Tell me why. Lone Tech is coached by the gate, uh, the great Kenny Prello, who was a guest on this show. Why? Why that game? I don't, the last because like the game before that, it was rough. Like I, we started arguing as a team, mm-hmm. and then we all had to, we all had to talk the next day. We was like, "Yo, it's crazy." Because Denzel was like, "Yo, you Gucci, bro." Who? And so we okay. got to an argument. Everybody, everything was heated. And it's crazy because we talked that same night. He was like, "Yo, bro, you Gucci." Just he's like, "I believe in you, big bro." Came <laughs> came in. I swear, I came in the next game. I was hot. Yeah. Took like the first twelve. End of the game over. Oh, end of the game with like over twenty. Had a double double. Mm-hmm. Even though we lost that game, but that was probably the highlight. Then the second highlight I was seeing. Like, Take me inside. We on we on the podcast. Uh, we 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 got to keep it a buck. Take me inside those those group chats, those conversations amongst your teammates in the locker room during those frustrating times that we had uh, in the season. It was tough. Like guys did get discouraged. I can't even lie. Like we went from like we was like six and zero to just like a six game losing streak. Mm. So guys like it was like discouraged. They didn't want to do certain things no more. Like guys was like getting the attitude of everything. Guys were arguing with each other. It was tough, but we 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 always had talks like before the games, after the games. Like yo, we got this. Like so, it was like it was, it was fifty fifty. Like everything was. It wasn't easy. I can't lie. What role did you play in in facilitating and helping to get the team back on track? I mean. I'm not gonna lie, I could have done a better job speaking up, but some, I was a guy though to, to like tell people like, "Yo, we Gucci." Like, I get we losing, but like we're we're good, like we're straight. Cause it's like, okay, we losing, but we just step by step, like, okay, boom, I go to make playoffs, okay, boom, after playoffs, boom, make a run. Yeah. We started this podcast talking about prom, and I, I told you I was just standing on the wall. I had a ball. I wasn't dancing or anything. I was just standing on the wall watching. The young man that we've had around 
and with us for so many years, just kind of grow up. <clears throat> and I remember there was one time this year we were in study hall. Study hall is just what it sounds like, ladies and gentlemen. You put the players in a room, tell them to open their books, give us their phones, and do their work. And oftentimes I'm in there reading my book as well. And sometimes I get too loud. I'm like, yo, man, quiet down. There was one time it got loud. And I was like, yo, keep it down. I looked up like, oh, the young man's growing up, son. They get it now. We here for business, son. Yeah. I remember that moment. I'm sitting there like, yo, oh, snap, son. I ain't here to play. I ain't here to play. You can see there was a time when you say, yo, I'm taking the reins. This is this is my team. And it's not easy for a young man. You're a young man still developing too, still trying to find your voice, still trying to figure out who you are as a leader. So all of that's going on. It's like one sociological um, experiment. Sometimes guys get in trouble off the court. Yeah. Unfortunately, we had to deal with that a little bit this year. Yeah. What's that like for you and your teammates? Uh, It'd be tough, like, Cause like okay, they got in trouble, and like one like one is hard not seeing them play, and then two like it's hard seeing them like do what they do with because like they be they be taking it rough, but at the same time you got you got yourself in that predicament, so it's like, but it's tough honestly. So it is two situations like you understand that they did something wrong and they got to be punished, but on the flip side you're like yo that's my man I want to see him back on the court. Yeah. So that is a tough place to be. Have you, have you guys ever get mad at the the leadership, uh, Baker, the school for having to implement such punishments at times? Uh, of course we was getting mad. <laughs> Do you express it to him like yo? Nah, we, I feel like that's a drag. But we, we always get mad. Like sometimes we feel like it's a drag, or sometimes sometimes we really do feel like it's reasonable. But sometimes we do feel like it'd be a drag. But at the same time, it's like you know you just gotta do what you gotta do. Mm. Just get through it. Once you get through it, it's over with now. So it don't matter. It's gonna be memory. Yeah. It's also an example to 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 guys. Is it like yo? We need to tighten up. Yeah, I did. I did had a couple like um, private talks with some guys, but it's like you could talk, but it's like at, at the end of the day, they their own man. So it's like they're gonna do what they want to do. But you had like, some talks. Let me. What's a big L talk like? Let me hear. What nah, I just like I will advise them from my own wrongdoings. Like. Like, say they fell in class, I'd be like, yo, don't be like me, bro. Like, cause not every, everybody didn't hear me about filling classes until like I got to my senior year, like applying to colleges. Like, yeah. it didn't hear me. So I would tell them, like, yo, bro, just make sure you do what you're doing. Cause like, sophomore year, sophomore freshman year, I was fine with just passing 65 on the dot. And they'd be doing the same thing. So it's like, I'd be trying to tell them. I always, I tell everybody that. Just don't focus on your school. Some of those missteps early in your high school career Im impacted your college process? Yeah. <laughs> like at first, I'm, I remember like I took my counselor. I thought I couldn't get into like no four year schools, mm -hmm. no four year schools. And it, it hit me as well when like coaches, some coaches couldn't even offer me mm -hmm. or get like say come to my school. Like that's when it hit. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, because some because some numbers and some grades. Yeah, but it's serious. That's why our coach has been screaming their heads off for years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it's all a process. You know, we all have our ups and downs. The The most important thing is that you learn the lesson and you don't repeat it. You know, and oh, that's why no matter how many times people get frustrated, like, yo, that's big L, son. Like, you love this kid as hard as genuine, pure. Like, for you to be able to sit there and say, yo, I, I tried to counsel the young homies. Like, yo, it, this is what I went through. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's just phenomenal, son. Phenomenal. That's the goal. We all going to make our mistakes. The goal is, once you learn that lesson, try not to um, repeat it again. The college process. What was it like the first time you learned there was a college coach in the gym for you? Uh, crazy, because I, ne I never knew there was a college coach in the gym for me. I never knew. <laughs> like, everything would be a surprise. I swear to God, like, a game will finish, the coach just come up to me and talk to me. Don't even know the guy. And then, like, sometimes after the game, Baker would text me, be like, oh, this coach, such and such. But it's well, actually it's a cool feeling though. Well, do you remember the first time a coach came up to you and shook your hand? Uh, I believe so. I think it was like from college coach. Uh, I thought it was the brother from that Massachusetts school. 
Oh no, he came like later on. I didn't. Even, I, I don't think he was there for me. Like, I didn't even know he was there. I think he came to see somebody else, and then he walked away wanting to know your name. Yeah. And then he would ultimately come see his player a few other times. Yeah. When you learn that coaches were there for you, was it pressure? Like, what type of games did you put together after I that? I mean, I feel like it's better not to know. <laughs> but even when I did know, it's like it wasn't pressure because it's like this is a regular, just like this regular game. They expected I'm a player. I'm playing. They watching. That's it. That's it. Um, it was pretty cool to see. Like, yo, it's funny because, um, you know, we could see you were trying to fight back laughter or smiles like, yo, <laughs> son, so, wow, somebody's here to see me? Like, yeah. yeah. The kid who was just a charter school kid has the opportunity to play college basketball. Yeah, you should be proud of that. That should be something fun uh, to revel in, son. So, I want y'all to know, I'll be on the bench just having a ball watching all of this. This is all a part of the the, the process, not just wins and losses. Watching you guys uh, grow as uh, not only basketball players, but young men. So it was cool to see L recruited, man. Coach came to see us a few um, different times. <clears throat> you actually went on a recruiting trip recently to which school? Uh, Genesee. Genesee Community College in which city? I think it's Batiba, New York. Batiba? Yeah, but it's like deep in Rochester. Tell us about that trip. It was dope, man. Like, um, <laughs> bought me a Greyhound bus ticket, came on the bus. That, yo, that bus, that bus ride was crazy. Wow. It was like seven hours. Yeah. Um, What'd you do? You had your music, your podcast? Yeah, music. Couldn't use the bathroom, like. Yeah, you don't want to use the bathroom on the bus. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Picked me up, drove me to, um, show me, like, he, like, drove me to the campus and he was showing me around the spots, like, um, places that people go to. Um, then I came to campus. Campus is nice, like nice, simple campus. It's like a um, the house is down here. You walk up a hill to the classes and the mm -hmm. gym. Show me the yo. They they weight room was OD. Like yeah. it's nice, see through. You can see the field. It look nice. A lot of open space. Um, the gym is nice. I actually ran up and down the team too. Like it was, everything was nice. You told me about running up and down the team. You was like, yo, coach, well, what y'all said is yeah. right. It was OD. It's crazy because like they was just playing around too. Like I mean, it was 50-50, but like yeah. Go hard at college, son. Yeah, that pace was crazy. Co it's another level, Al. Yeah. <laughs> you was holding your own out there? I was doing solid. It's another level. And let me tell you, that's every day. Yeah. Practice, game, big game, small game. That is every day. When you think about it. High school, there's a whole bunch of kids that play high school um, in basketball. Well, it's a smaller group that plays college. So some of the, the weak links in high school, they get weeded out. So it's the best of the best from all these different neighborhoods, all these different parts of the globe. And it is a phenomenal experience, but it ain't easy. So I was laughing you say, yo, Baker, Baker was telling y'all all year, yo, I'm trying to tell y'all what it is out there. Yeah, I've always felt like he was just like talking just to talk. <laughs> like sometimes when he talks, I just be feeling like, oh yeah, he just be saying that just like, I guess to like get us to lock in, but it was like. It's next level at the college. And really that's all our, our job is, is to prepare you for the next level, man. But I'm, I'm glad you got that experience. When coach talked about your possible role next year at that school with that team, what are some of the things he said? Uh. He said like make sure you're in shape. Uh, they run a lot. Um, he says play through your mistakes. Um, what else did he say? Oh, um, and he said he said don't like he don't be lazy. Like he hate like he hates stuff. Like like see you mess up. Don't don't start acting discouraged or like start like not playing defense or giving up. Like mm -hmm. yeah. Other than that, he said he said he expected good things from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. College. You've been around for a long time. You was the young bro for a little bit. You got to see some of your older bros go on to play college basketball. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? It was cool, man. Like watching them. Like I used to play with them. Now they playing college. I went a couple. I went to some of their games. It was lit. Mm -hmm. How do you think some of them have fared at the college level? Um, yeah. I, 
feel like I I feel like obviously now nah, I feel like the routes isn't what I expected from them, but like I feel like they're gonna get to it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like some of them have fell off track. Yeah. Whether academically or they just get distracted and they're no longer part of basketball. And salute to those young men. They know I got their back now and forever. But I would say you the goal is to finish the race. Yeah. You know, and you may not have an example per se to follow. You got to go out there and, and blaze a trail. You know what I mean? I remember one time there was one guy in the park, one of our guys. He went on to the college level. And, um, you know, he played and then he's no longer playing now. I saw him in the park and I'm like, yo, you don't have practice? You don't have workouts? You don't have a Planet Fitness membership? You don't have a paper due? Basically, I'm, I'm running through a whole list of questions like, yo, bro, where you are in your career, you shouldn't have the time to be standing here in this park. Because as we already mentioned, being a college athlete is the hardest thing you're going to ever do. He was like, nah, coach, nah, coach, nah, coach. Three minutes later, Baker walked out of the school, saw the guy, asked him the same set of questions. Yo, you ain't got workout? You ain't got practice? I say, I have to say, yo, L, the next step, for, not just for you, for everybody, the hardest thing you're going to ever be a part of. You ready for that? Being in that dorm, uh, road trips, you just came back from a game, you didn't play, but you still got class 9 a.m. next morning. Yeah. You still got practice tomorrow, you better bust your ass. Coach say, Coach, don't care, you mad you ain't play yesterday. You ready for that? Of course. I know you are, bro. I know you are. Um, going back to Wingate. You asked me this the other day. I didn't have an answer for you. You say, Yo, Coach Will, what was your favorite game from uh, the year? I thought you gentlemen put together a lot of great basketball late. But I remember the Tilden game. How many overtimes we played? Double. Double overtime. Yeah, that was, that was dope. And it came down to big plays from our seniors. O'Larry Waju Arawolo and Aiden Smith. Talk to me about them plays. It was, I don't know. It's crazy because like the first time we went to um, overtime, that play was by accident. What, what was it? Was it tipping? Hmm? No, nah, it was an inbounds play. Like That play was not, like it wasn't for me to score to make an overtime. It was for Aiden. Mm-hmm. He just didn't catch the ball, caught it, made a tough layup, then we got overtime. Then we double overtime. No, I think eight of eight of course another overtime with a floater. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we just ran him out the park. Ran it was over. Him. Ran him out the park. Was there any pressure in these high stakes situations? Oh, for sure. <laughs> that yo, that game has so much like tension to begin with. Like TikToks, um, it was token on the court, dancing on like it I, I won't part that was open myself, like. I had a bad free throw night. I had a bad scoring night. It was everything bad. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I somehow pulled through. And then Aiden pulled through. And then Timmy pulled through. So mm-hmm. it was good. He said TikToks because these kids be talking smack to each other over social media before games. But uh, it's the Battle of Flatbush. Uh, Tilden versus uh, Wingate. Two schools that are real close by. The kids know each other for years, playing in the same neighborhood. Went to Dover overtime. Big plays by our seniors. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, yo, that's who you guys are. That game was crazy. Crowd was crazy too. Yeah. It was filthy. We were on the road until then. That's who you guys are. That's what you are capable of. And for some reason, unfortunately, we weren't able to get to those levels consistently. Why do you think that is? Uh I don't know. I feel like like we were inconsistent. If that makes sense. Like I I don't know what it was. I don't know why, but we was inconsistent. Like one game. Somebody will have 30. Next game, they will just like not play defense or have like six points. Like, mm. I don't know. But I think, I feel like towards the end of the season, though, like that's when it became like mm. a consistent thing. Talk to me about your relationship with Aiden Smith. Uh, that's my dog. Aiden Smith was a, a, a versatile scoring forward that played for us. Um, 
Yeah. Tell me about your that's your bosom buddy now, but I guess the first time you met him, he was kind of he was a late addition to the program, uh, yeah. junior year. Talk to me about your first interactions and you guys' relationship. Now it's crazy because I actually knew him before he came to Wingate. Like, we was always cool, but we got close when he came to Wingate. Like, um, he came, I introduced him to everybody. Then we started. You introduced him to everybody? Of course. Why? Yeah. I mean, I know how I first to be a new kid and I know nobody, so I introduced him to everybody. Yeah. Um, then we was hanging out, we was cool. Like, we, we came close when we came to Wingate. I knew him from LTG. But when he came to Wingate, that's when he became my dog. LTG, you know him from competing against him. Yeah, we played on. We went. Uh, I met him in the summer camp. Aiden Smith's alter ego is the Joker. <laughs> he thinks everything is funny. Yeah, he do. Right now, I love the kid. At first, that was a kind of annoying, son. That that didn't bother you at first. You was cool with that. Nah, I just I just got used to like, <laughs> like you just have to just like say like Biggers yelling. <laughs> Or it's getting serious, or it's a timeout. You just, I just don't look at his face. Like, yeah. you just, you just gotta know how to move around, guys. Aiden Smith is somebody who came and done great things. I, I love that young man. You know, he too lost a lot of weight in the program. And um, again, prom night, I was just sitting back enjoying all of you young men. Aiden Smith looked like he's going on to play college basketball or Westbury. Bryce Haynes. Talk to me about the addition of Bryce Haynes, a young man that transferred in from Eagle Academy, was our point guard this year. What was it like your first time uh, meeting Bryce? It's crazy. When I first met Bryce, yeah, I had the same class with him. So, like, I did the same thing with Bryce, too. Well, no, Bryce actually knew a couple people in the school, though, because he's, you know, TikTok and whatnot. But, yeah, Bryce is cool. Like, that's my dog, too. That was your first time meeting him? Hmm? Yeah, we came. He, like we had class together. I said, "Pull up." We sat at the same table, chopping it up. <laughs> Talk to us about his gameplay. What was his contribution like to the team? Uh, he's our point guard. Pass, sent me off for a lot of points. Uh, sometimes he'll go off for points of himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he was he was good for like a good ten and ten and eight. He he's a shooter, shooter. Yeah, shooter, shooter. Especially when you're hot. Bryce Haynes is going on to play college basketball at. York College, man. Um, senior night. Talk to me about it. Senior night. That was probably one of the best nights of my high school life. I swear. Like, we came in the game before, before the game even started. Like, I was before we was celebrating, jumping up, screaming. We were standing up for the game. Like, yo, we, we about to win. We about to pack them up. Celebrating where? In the locker room? Nah, I'm in the gym just running around like yeah. crazy. Like it was, it was seeing that was lit. And the crowd, I ne I've never played in front of a crowd with that many people in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God I'm not shy, so like it didn't. You know, I like the crowd, but that, that, was, does, that doesn't affect you at all. Nah, it used to, but not no more. How did it used to affect you? You got nervous? Yeah, I was always nervous. Like, say if I miss a shot, miss a layup, miss something, somebody be like, "Oh, nah, he suck," or like he's horrible, or the crowd go crazy. But after a while, though, I got used to it. I started to like the crowd, bad or good. Yeah. But that game, seeing night, one of the best games. It was crazy because <clears throat> junior year, we had a lot of energy for seeing night. But we were already out of the playoff picture. Yeah. So we kind of really weren't playing for much, just pride. But this year, senior year? Oh, it meant a lot. It meant everything. Yeah. If we win that game, we go to the playoffs. If we lose, go home. we go home. Yo, bro, yo, Al, the, 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 the stakes was high, bro. Yeah, everything about that game was high. We, we lost to that team too before, so it's like... The stakes was high, son. Yeah, see, Cam was on senior night. We lost that team before. And on top of that, it's for playoffs too, so... When you go into a big game like that, do you... Step away from social media. Do you, do you do you? Nah. Social media activity is the same. Everything's the same. Do you feed off of the energy? Cause everybody, yo, we at the game tonight. I, like I, I don't know. Something about seeing that man. Like I just could. I, I told myself like I'm not losing seeing that. Yeah. Like I just can't. I know it was a big deal when I got word that Elle's mom's was showing up. Yeah, she never seen me play before, ever. You know, it's hard for families with the high school schedule. We play four o'clock, like most people at work. Um. What was it like seeing her in the gym? 
was, it was a good feeling. Gave a hug after the game. It was nice. That's your social media thumbnail? Of course. I'm taking it down. You hugging your mom on scene night? Yeah. What was it like, the pregame ceremony? Pre, oh, pregame was lit, too. Like, I like what things Beaker said about everybody. It was, it was, what, it was, what did he say about you? Uh, said, um... How my my journey like transferring schools or all, all the things I've been through breaking my leg lip weight, mm. um. Then um, how much weight I lost, and then yeah, just he said know. it makes sense. You are his first four year, four year player. Four year player. That's how he started it. Um, when coaches are on you, getting you in your ass, right? We we understand. We still are aware of everything that you put in. So is it like a shock to him speak about you that way? Like, yo, like go through everything. Nah, sometimes with Baker, it is. Because he, I don't know, just don't know him. Yeah. One day he happy, one day he mad. <laughs> like, so it is. I don't know. I, you can't really tell him. We, go, we going through the process of greatness, right? We never lose track of all the sacrifices you made and we just pushing you for more. So that's why I really love those moments because the coach, we get to show you that, yo, dog, we we are aware of what you what you what you've been through and the work you put in. You know what I'm saying? The the being in the gym every day and grinding is actually it's our love for you. We try to prepare you for outside. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I was I was just appreciative to be there and to watch you guys have that moment to be a part of the ride for all these years, man. It was just, it's a special moment for us too. You know, everything is like a culmination of all the work that we put in. And it was great that we were able to pull it off and going into the playoffs, man. How yeah. exciting a night was that? Yo, that game was so lit. I'm talking about like, that was the first game you ever won. People running on the court. Mm -hmm. Everything's packed, screaming. Cam I never seen that much camera in my life. Yeah. Um, we was up like thirty in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Crowd screaming after everything. It was lit. It was everything was lit. Mm -hmm. And my mom was there too. What do you do after a game like that? You stay up all night. Oh yeah, I was up all night. <laughs> my mom she didn't stop talking. What'd she say? What was that experience like for her? She was like, um, she was proud of me. She was like, she was like, oh, I didn't even know this is my son. Uh, she was like, wow, I'm proud of you. She was like, you did so good. Um, yeah, she was proud. It, it is an amazing experience when somebody that sees you every day and they know you from another part of your life, that's your mom, she see you in the house and you're seeing tops, playing video games or whatever. But to see your son on the middle of that stage. Yeah. Like she, always, she always heard, but never just seen it. Like, hold on, what? Yeah. This is what's been going on? That's amazing. You know, she's a big part of that too. Believing in Coach Baker, uh, allowing you uh, to compete. <clears throat> because when you broke your leg, some of your family was a little hesitant to let you back out there, right? Yeah. My posse wanted me to play. Yeah. Even my mom, my mom, my mom she wanted me to play, but she was like, do you want to stop playing? Do you want to quit? I was like, nah. Well, the pop, Pops wasn't with it. Nah, he wasn't jacking it, nothing at all. Yeah. They play soccer in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. Man, with this American basketball BS. <clears throat> Loyal to the game, summer classic. Going down, or starting Wednesday, June 28th. Your birthday, right? Sir. Big one, eight. Um, Olari Waju, Arawolo. This is going to be your last year competing in the Loyal to the Game Summer Classic. How you feeling? Uh, it's bittersweet. It's like, time time did fly. Yeah. It's really my last time at OTG, but it's sweet because, like, I get one last go around. Like, be the first home team, you know, something to win a chip. You know, make history one more time, so. Uh, oh, that's what we after, son. The first home team, Loyal to the Game Summer Classic, spearheaded by our guy, Mr. Kayvon Baker, Nash Park. Been at it for years. Put in a home team, or we put in a high school team. You know, Baker's hands off. He's the commissioner. Leave each other. Unbiased. But he would love to see the home team 
come away with some hardware in yeah. that senior division. You guys had some some great runs. Yeah. Close we ever got them, we was like we was like one game away from the championship game. We lost by one. That was two years ago with Coach Reg. Yeah. Y'all had the black and orange jerseys. Yeah. That was your squad, L. Gang yeah, gang. That's who was on that squad. It was like, I think it was Sir, Dion, Miles, Frank, Saraj, Abdul, <laughs> me, Thomas. Like it was it was that's why I was deep. That was gang gang. That was about one, one point. But the team play was tough though, but we could have won that game. What's the squad looking like this year? I don't know what Baker's doing. Is it a Wingate squad? Is it a home squad? What, you know anything about it? I don't know. You don't tell me nothing. <laughs> you just show up. I just, just, you just tell me to show up. Mm -hmm. Any pressure, man? Nah. Tell the people, what's it like being in that park? In that park? It's lit, honestly. Especially like, um, first opening day be lit. And especially like when playoff time come around, that's when it really be lit. Mm -hmm. That's when the crowd, the crowd, the crowd isn't active, they in tune. Yeah, those games, is, those games is the best games. Do you know how special it is to be at the center of these courts representing your schools, your community, your neighborhood, and your friends? Do you know how special that is? Do you see the pride that your classmates take in your successes? Yeah. Like, yo, you could really, you have the ability to impact somebody's day. Yeah. You know? I see it. Like when we play, the crowd being in tune, like my friends, like they take it, like they take it personal, like they the ones playing, like. So yeah, I see it. With that comes great responsibility, son. Yeah. Great responsibility. Your responsibility is to pe be prepared for those moments. You know, put all the work you can put in to be prepared when those moments arise. You know, um, sometimes it's hard to muster up that energy when you're in an empty gym. Like, man, yeah. I don't want to run. I don't want to do that. Yeah, what am I doing it for? Yeah, it's, it's hard to stay motivated. It's easy when, oh, snap, everybody's here. But yeah. if you wait until then, it's too late. Yeah. You got to be prepared walking in that door. You know what I'm saying? But it is special to sit around and see guys like Malachi, uh, the good brother Shamal, Dwayne Collins. Like, these guys are going on a ride with you. You know what I'm saying? They counting on you, and they wear their Wingate hoodie, a T-shirt, with a little bit more pride yeah. when you guys are successful. Of course, yeah. Wingate, Wingate, Wingate community is deep. It's real. Yeah, they, they with us when we losing all winning. Yeah. LTG Summer Classic, man. Last year, you guys put together a good run. Um, It was different. I was coaching that squad. You had your guys Aiden. We lost to the eventual champions. How was last summer? Last summer was tough. I I didn't play at first. Then when I got on the team, it was tough like getting back into it. I didn't play for a while. Uh, but yeah, then we lost to that team. Like, but it was a close. I think about two. Mm -hmm. So that was tough as well. So. Uh. What's next, man? Graduation coming up. Yeah, next week, Monday. How you feeling? Uh, bittersweet. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited for graduation, though. To walk the stage, get my diploma, do what I work hard for, you know, late up up into the morning doing homework sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You got yeah. dance moves planned for graduation? <laughs> nah. Last year, some of them folks was doing yeah. all type of dance moves. Across the graduation stage, I yeah. was I was impressed by their balance. They only got like a a little catwalk, and they doing all type of spins and dips. I'm like, yo, son, did you see that clip of a teacher or a principal who was withholding kids diplomas as they walked across the stage and yeah. did anything crazy? Yeah, it's, a, it's like a new trend now. <laughs> Everybody want to do so. Yeah, see some kid like um, he graduated, went to the side, started dancing, formed like a big crowd. Yeah. Uh. Um, whatever is next, I I believe you hold the key to your success. You hold the key to your success, Al. You know, um, I think you are a bright young man. I think you are an honorable young man. I think you are destined for greatness if if you want to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about perhaps you don't have, unfortunately, 
many uh, examples at the next level to follow, you know, you got to blaze the trail like you've always done. You know, your contribution to LTG and Wingate doesn't stop now that you're aged out and moving on. Because you know, and I know, next year in the practices and two years in the practices, three years in the practices, Big is going to be, you see Big Al, look at what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What do you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now? Um, graduate. Being successful, honestly. I don't know what that could be. I can't I can't speak into the future, but <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be broke. I'm not gonna be broke. What do you want to study at the college level? Um, I want to study towards um physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm not say like the goal is to play basketball, like beyond college, like of course. probably go pro, you know, whatever. But let's say that doesn't happen. Like I still want to be like around the sports scene. Mm -hmm. So physical therapy. Physical therapy. What else we got, man? Uh, loyalty game, summer classic. You guys going to Atlantic City soon? What's those AAU trips like? AAU trips are lit. Can't lie. Meeting the guys, they're cool with guys. That's my last. That's my last AAU trip too. Yeah. You ever think you would coach basketball? Coach, coach is lit. Coach is lit, but it, it is it is like, I can see how it would be stressful, but coaching is lit though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want your LTG Wingate legacy to be? Uh, that's a question. What want my legacy to be? Uh, I don't know. I just want to be known like, yo, people say my name like, like Larry, and you put on for Wingate like, do we have to do? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you just can't speak bad on my name like after what I did. So, yeah. Oh, Larry, why is you are a Wolo? Um, I think that's all I got for you, young man. I think that's all I got for you, man. I, I tell you, it's been a it's been a pleasure over these years. I keep talking about being an honorable young man and how important that is. I'll give you an example. Like Big always say, yo, L gonna be where he's supposed to be, and he ain't gonna be late, he ain't gonna lie. So anytime there was a discrepancy. Because of who you were, if L said this is what it was, then that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? And it's because of that people are willing to go to the the, the moon and back for you, son. I, I I would implore you to always keep those qualities. You know, I'm always here for you. You know Baker's always there for you. Coach Rez, Taz, man, like the world is yours. You know, um, I hosted the event recently, My City Alumni Classic. You attended the last two years. What was, what was that like for you? Nah, it's it's fun. It's actually it's actually fun watching the guy that I, like people that I coach. Mm -hmm. Like they they like in the basketball scene, like and be coaching, they can be playing, yeah. you was playing. It was fun to watch. The reason we put that together is to help keep you guys motivated. Because again, at the next level, there's gonna be challenges. You know, and I think the reason sometimes people fall off track at the college level is because they have unreal expectations of what it's going to be like. They think it's going to be a walk in the park. Yeah. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be days when you broke and you're going to worry about quitting and go get a job. There's going to be issues with your family. My city serves as, yo, we all been through that in some shape, form of another, but we finished the race. And this is what it looks like. You could be a part of this community. You could have your degree. You could have, like, that thing is to keep you motivated, right? So when you're in your dorm room, like, yo, F this coach, man. He ain't playing me. I'm quitting. I'm going home. You know what? Baker finished it. Holly finished it. Aunt McLean finished it. Yo, man, let me, let me just go ahead and bang these four years out. Because you bang out those four years, you get to sit with your arms Fold it behind your head in a lawn chair at LTG every summer and talk shit for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's it. That's when you try to make it out to the lawn chair. Sit with us, man. And sit there and just, just talk shit because we we did it. And when we talk about it, we not talk about, oh, championship here, Austin here. We talk about we finished the race. That's what's really most important, son. Real quick, Coach Anthony McClain, young man I coached at Brooklyn College who joined the coaching staff this year. What was that like for you? Um, and I was I was happy to end it honestly. Why? Wow. Cause like 
he always like he always just been around even though he was like coaching like transit mm-hmm. but like not like he's like really a part of night around all the time so it's like it was good so and, and it's like he like he's like um he's like a fun coach like he, like but he will get serious though. like he will like like bug out but he's close in age to you guys i thought he, i thought he was great for you you know probably got a different tone than baker yeah you know what i mean um i thought it was fun you know, I would I would watch him go in there in the locker room and give y'all something different than perhaps myself or Baker would give you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um that's good, man. You take your lessons from each and everybody, man. You you take your lessons and you 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 cultivate your own leadership style and everything. I appreciate you, man. You got anything else for him? Uh nah. Pretty much it. Oh. Appreciate appreciate everybody, like. Wingate, LTG, Baker, and all the coaches, Coach Tariq, you, Taz, Coach Raj. Appreciate everybody. Y'all been there since day one. You the man, young man. I want to shake your hand. I don't even shake hands on podcasts. Yo, I was stunned, young man. I wish the best for you, son. The world is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, that was O'Larry Wajuaro Wolo. I'm William Holly, WBH Radio. We out.